Welcome to my Valentine's Day extravaganza. Let's think. Galentine, gala? A Galentine's Day? Ga is it gala or gala? I don't have enough money to have ever been invited to a gala. Potato, potato. So I'm not sure how it's pronounced, uh, but let's get into it. Is it a gala? Do you have to uh, get dressed all fancy to hang out with me today? The answer to that question is, hey, yeah, you do every day is a ce celebrate good times. Come on, it's a celebration. You thought it was over, it wasn't. All right, what are we doing today? I have a pretty lofty list of things that I want to make some Valentine's Day treats. I don't think we'll have time to like decorate our house, which I don't think I'm gonna do anyway because ugh, listen, who who has time for that kind of stuff? A couple of them are ideas and then the rest are like recipes so i'm pretty dang excited to make some of them so let's just dive right in so do you want me to tell you what everything okay eggy bread basically here's the thing if you want to make anything valentine's day theme put it in the shape of a heart i found a lot of recipes actually just one as i was scrolling through trying to find the recipes for today and it was puff pastry dough with some kind of cream strawberries powdered sugar and boom you got a valentine's day dessert and if that is too complicated for you just strawberries that's that's really all you need eggy bread if you've never had that i'll try to show you what it is heart waffles oh don't forget to remind me to show you the stuff that i got from target for valentine's day for my kiddos so i got a heart uh, of course i got another dash waffle maker in the shape of a heart this time Fun story about that, maybe I'll share it later, but I probably won't, I'll probably forget. So I guess I'll just share it now. <laughs> so basically, I used to have a waffle maker in the shape of a heart. I think it may have made four at a time, or maybe two, I don't remember. It clearly made an impact on my life, but it did. Because I donated it when I became a mom because I thought, moms don't make heart-shaped waffles. If moms don't make heart-shaped waffles, who does? In my mind, I had this perception of like how moms behaved and how I thought I needed to behave. Wrong, all of it. <laughs> behave any dang way you want. That's the word of the day. So I finally bought another heart waffle maker. So I'm excited about that. Of course it's Dash. Hey, strawberry hand pies, baby trail mix. I'm really excited about that one. Linzer cookies, don't know what that is, but I'm pumped. Red velvet cake truffles. Yep, pumped, double time. And then peanut butter cookies with heart-shaped chocolates and a bonus Nutella pound cake with berries, super easy. And that used to be my breakfast every day. So I'm really excited. Eleanor saw that one on the list and was like, let's go. Because pound cake is her jam. One time I bought her pound cake. Yes, it's story time, I guess. One time I bought her pound cake and because she wanted it from the grocery store. She was with me. We came home, she put it in her closet. <laughs> Okay, purple is not festive. How do we fix this? All right, this is better. Hydrate, it purifies the soul. Let's get in to cooking. Let's get into the hand pies. And correct me if I'm wrong, was there like a lawsuit with McDonald's over their little apple pies or something? I don't know what it was about, if they were too hot and someone tried to sue, I don't remember. Did they find a finger in one or something? I don't, but I feel like there was a lawsuit thing happening. That's besides the point. What do I need for this? <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, 20 years later, I'm looking up the recipe. Oh, so there's two ways to make these hand pies. I feel like that's the coleslaw vat from Never Been Kissed. You know what I'm talking about. Rob, 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 Rob. All right, I'll stop. This also wasn't labeled, so I'm pretty proud of myself for actually picking the right one. I'm gonna label it right now. <laughs> all-time favorite movies of all time by the way so there are two ways to make this recipe am I doing it the right way probably not you can either get pre-made store-bought like pie dough you guys know in the refrigerated section they sell that it's like Pillsbury I'm pretty sure I'm allergic to that I'm allergic to preservatives so but you can go that way not that it like really bothers me but homemade always tastes better especially when it comes to pie crust so if you wanna do it the convenient way, grab that and then grab a little bit of pie filling, like a can of pie filling, and then you can make it that way. But you know, everything is better homemade. So I am just throwing together some crust, some pie dough. Dough, what am I making? Pie 
pie crust. I don't know, heart shaped strawberry hand pies, but I'm just making the crust for it. It doesn't take that long. It's very simple to make and it uses ingredients that you likely already have on hand. So I have a cup and a quarter of flour in there, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon and a half of sugar. I don't really measure, you know, I just use the approximate measuring method. And then I have a half a cup of butter here. I guess plugging it in would help. I just gave the dry ingredients a little mix and then throw in cold butter. And I just cube mine up and you can use a pastry cutter to cut in the butter, but I just find that this is simple and easy. And the instructions tell you to like put it in the freezer and get a bunch of what all this kind of stuff. So once all of the butter is incorporated, it's going to kind of feel like sand, but it's still very grainy. So we have to let it like actually incorporate and become a dough. So we have to add some liquid. I am going to add a little bit of my ice cold drinking water in there. A little bit goes a long way. I'm I'm gonna do a little bit more. Okay, now this is magic. Do you believe in magic? This is the texture that we're looking for. So it's really grainy, right? It's kind of like sand. But if you clump it together in your hand, it's going to form a really nice uh, ball. It's gonna come together like that. I mean, perfect. So now at this point, we need to chill the dough. And I'm just going to pull out some saran wrap. My red thing always falls off. Dump the crust in a pile. Oh yeah. And then form it all into a disc. And if it doesn't form into a disc or it's too dry, you need to add some more ice water. Because if it's too dry, it won't roll out. And then just roll it into the saran wrap and then pop this into the oven, not the oven, the refrigerator for about 30 minutes to let it chill. I'm gonna make the homemade filling, which of course you can buy pre-made, but it always tastes better when you make it from scratch. And you're going to need just some strawberries, two cups of strawberries, a splash of vanilla, maple syrup, cornstarch. Again, ingredients I'm sure you already have on hand. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just dice up some strawberries. I think I made jam, strawberry jam, once in my life, and it was great. It took me a while, and this recipe doesn't seem to be the same as that. You know, and now that I'm thinking about it, if you have like jam in your fridge, strawberry, strawberry jam, 17. What's that song? Strawberry, strawberry, oh, it's strawberry wine. Whatever, strawberry jam is more fitting. If you have some in your fridge, maybe use that. You know, that's another shortcut if you wanna be semi-homemade over here. Once all the strawberries are cut, I portioned it out. I was like, that's pretty much a cup, that's pretty much a cup, two cups. I'm gonna throw it straight into a saucepan. Don't judge me for my stove. I didn't clean it off after dinner last night. It's totally fine. I also still don't know how to work it. Is that high or low? I'll never know. So to this, I'm going to add two and a half teaspoons of cornstarch, a splash of vanilla, and about two tablespoons of maple syrup. One, a two. And then just give that a toss and let this sit and simmer, break down, whatever you wanna call it for about, it says eight minutes, which seems pretty precise, but I'm gonna challenge that and I'm gonna say it's probably gonna take more like 15. Okay, maybe eight minutes was pretty precise. It's only been about four. <laughs> and it's already coming along. I thought the bottom was gonna burn, so definitely keep an eye on it, especially if you're crazy and put it up to full volume. Full heat. Anyway, one egg, one tablespoon of milk. This is the egg wash, so I'm just mixing that together while this burns. And it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. You can do this with any fruit that you like or have or whatever's in season. Strawberries, obviously, for Valentine's Day is perfect for Florida. That's in season for us right now. It's a celebration. celebration. Well, per the usual, I did not read the instructions until just now. The lady on the blog says that she waits until that <laughs> completely cool. She leaves it in her fridge overnight. Uh, sorry, I don't have time for that. So I'm just gonna throw it into another dish and then throw it in my fridge, maybe for like two more recipes and then I'll finish it. I mean, it's good if you plan ahead and all that stuff. Oh, I'm supposed to give it a taste to see if it's sweet. 
see if it's sweet enough. That's good enough for me. I don't know, I think it's fine. But she suggests if it's not sweet enough, you can add a little bit of sugar and mix that in. So I'm gonna throw this in the fridge. Look how, first of all, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, who am I? Somebody call the Food Network because this, this the, does it get any simpler than this? I am going to move on to some, it, they call it baby trail mix. I just think that's funny. I don't know why, I mean, I've, this could be good for babies or adults. I looked at the recipe and it's similar to like, I'm sure you've seen like a, I think they call it a Cupid Chow with like Chex Mix and melting chocolate and M&Ms and literally just sugar, 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 sugar. So I thought, well, maybe it's a little healthier. So it's just a mixture of dried strawberries. I grabbed these from Trader Joe's. They're freeze dried strawberries, I should add. They are my kids' favorites. They love them. It, they have a crunch to them. So normal dried fruit is like gummy, a little bit gummy. These are freeze dried, so they are, it's like a chip, it's delicious. And then it calls for some of these, which are also some of my kids' favorites, but expensive, cheaper than eggs. They are the like yogurt, freeze dried yogurt. And then some Cheerios. They sell very berry Cheerios, but you know what else I saw? Strawberry and banana Cheerios. They were barbecue and free, so I bought both. There's pink in here. And then for Valentine's Day, they must have these out. A special edition chocolate and strawberry Cheerio. Have you ever seen? I haven't eaten Cheerios since, I don't know, middle school when I got really sick and like vomited a bunch up. <laughs> That did it for me, but did you even know they had this variety? Crazy sauce. So I think I'm gonna use like a medley, maybe a medley of these two. I don't know, I'm gonna give them a taste. And then the baby snacks and the dried strawberries. And I'm gonna throw them all into here. First up, the very berry Cheerios and just cracking open that box. I'm like, I got a whiff of, I don't even know what, artificial flavorings. Not great, not gonna lie. Honey Bunches is still my fave. All right, and then we've got the chocolate strawberry Cheerios, bottoms up. These taste a million times better than these. So I'm gonna go with these. I'll actually do a little bit of both in here. Why not? Mix things up. How much are we pouring in? I don't know. In go the Gerber yogurt melt snacks. It calls for two bags, but like how long is this gonna stay fresh? And then, I guess I bought a different flavor, I don't know. And then some freeze dried strawberries. I'm sure you can do this with any of your favorite pink snacks. Oh, look how festive. It's so beautiful. It needs a moment of its own. Before we give it a toss and mix everything in here. All right, well, that's looking good. Pretty good ratio. You don't have to measure anything. Just dump it in until it looks good. You can add more cereal, more strawberries, whatever floats your dang boat. And just like that, you have a nice, simple after-school snack that's semi-healthy for the kiddos. And festive, too. Do a little taste test, and I'm just wondering who the heck is gonna eat all the rest of these Cheerios. Yeah, I feel like my kids are gonna gobble that up. It's a little dry. Well, this next recipe seems a little time-intensive. They are red velvet truffles or something like that. Cake, they're basically cake balls. They're just red and I don't know, fancy. I couldn't find red velvet cake at my grocery store, but I did find the strawberry supreme, so I'm gonna whip this up. We just need to get the cake mix. If you know me, you know that I have a hack, I guess, to make box cake mix taste delicious, taste bakery quality, and it's really simple. I'm sure you've heard of it. So instead of water, you add milk. This happens to call for one cup, and you can even use a you know, dairy-free alternative. And however many eggs it calls for, add one. So if this calls for three, I'm going to add four. And then when it calls for oil, use butter. Ah, uh, you know, I only brought so much in from my freezer and I just don't feel like taking the walk to the garage. I don't care, just leave me alone. Half a cup of butter, do as I say, not as I do. Ugh. Oh man, I should have brought out my mixer. Whip this up. Essentially, we just need any sort of cake. So even if your bakery sells like the cake, just the cake, I've seen them sell like the cake patties. I don't know what they call them, but I've, I've seen some stores do that. Oh my gosh, what am I choking on? <laughs> <coughs> the cake 
chemicals. All right, I'm good. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I feel like someone's here. I don't care enough to check though. <laughs> there is a way to make the cake mix a little healthier using Greek yogurt and I forget what else. I made it last summer, I made the coconut cake. So if you are interested in seeing what I did to make it a little healthier, you can, I'll try to link that video below. If I don't link it, just ask in the comments and hopefully I'll link it for you. I'll tell you something, my arm's about to fall off, so I'm gonna say that's good enough. And then just dump it into a prepared nine by 13 dish. And by prepared, I mean greased. <laughs> you know what, I don't think I've ever had strawberry cake before, so salmonella, I dare you. I don't typically like cake batter, but you know. Yeah, I still don't like cake batter. So throw this into the oven until it's done, about 25 minutes. So while that cooks, I'm going to finish the hand pies, grabbing my pastry dough out of the fridge. I'm gonna dust my work surface with a little bit of flour. And I know I have a pink rolling pin, but I, you know, when I need this one, I can never find it. Maybe I should have added some water. It's already cracking. Ah, what a rip. I was gonna drizzle some on. There are no rules to baking. Baking is an art, don't you know? <laughs> All right, this is gonna be a mess. But that's what you came for, right? I'm gonna try to roll this out. Oh, oh yeah, that's great, Kim. That's, oh my God, where's Julia Child? She would beat me with this rolling pin. I'm embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. Oh my gosh, the worst. Sometimes I make it and it's perfection. Other times, this. Oh, it's so like when you have dry Play-Doh and you try to make it <laughs> pliable again. It will work. All right, here we go. Because it must. What movie is that from? Name that movie. Because it must. That might be really hard. I'm sure that's really generic and in a lot of movies. Okay, anyway, making this pie crust uh, I'll give you a hint, Brendan Fraser's in it. Making this pie crust makes me want pecan pie real bad. Pretty sure I'm gonna make it this weekend because I just can't hold off any longer. It was delish. Like how many hand pies am I gonna make? One? This is not enough dough. Well, you know what? It's good enough. Thing is we need a top and bottom, you know? All right, hand pies for two coming on up. I have a heart shaped, whatever this is, cookie cutter. So I'm just gonna cut a bunch of hearts. Anyone else eat pie crust dough growing up? No, just me? Okay. It always looks so cute, doesn't it? So I'm gonna roll up the excess dough and then just cut out as many dang hearts as I can. Meanwhile, taking the hearts that I've already punched out and just putting them on parchment. I'll have you know the second round, much nicer. Ooh, wait, wait a second here. Looks like we've got an Instagram photo happening. More hearts. And this is actually making more than I thought. And if I forget to mention it later, you can freeze these, which is what I plan on doing with most of them. Cause like, you know, there's only so many of us. How many hand pies can we eat before they go bad, you know? How stinking adorable are these? And our jam looks pretty dang good. It looks like a really nice consistency. It coagulated great. I'm just gonna grab a little scooper. You can grab a spoon or whatever. I'm not gonna use this entire thing. And you know what? I, you don't have to do it in the shape of a heart either. That goes without saying. Okay, a, a scant tablespoon there. This jelly jam, whatever concoction it is, was so dang good. I put it in a glass container to store in my fridge. So we're gonna have it on toast in the morning, bagels, biscuits, whatever the heck I want. Spoonful. You know what? I thought I was gonna freeze some, but I'm just gonna give some to our neighbors. That's a, that seems like a better idea. Here is the tricky part for me anyway. Well, I definitely overfilled some of these. Okay, I kind of spread it out and I'm just gonna plop the tops on. Oh my gosh, bonus, we have some really great jam. Top goes on to each of them. This might be my absolute favorite. And if you don't wanna fill it with like something homemade and not the can pie filling, if you're not into pie or whatever, you can use almond paste in the baking aisle right by like the graham cracker crumbs and oh my gosh is that the most delicious thing i've ever had in my life okay we've got a little bit of spillage happening but it's whatever it'll we'll live we'll be fine i'm just gonna clamp the two ends together with a fork make sure the filling mostly stays in while it cooks these are like homemade pop tarts all right a little time consuming 
but I think the end product will totally be worth it. I mean, look at these little pockets of joy. Oh, they're so cute. If you are going to freeze them, I believe this is the time to get that done. But I am going to throw some egg wash on here and then pop them in the oven, my little beauties. Whoa, a little too much on that one. You can add sparkling sugar to the tops of these as well, but I could not find any and I did not care that much. So I'm gonna leave them as they are. One more thing, before they go into the oven, I'm just going to pierce them a little bit with a paring knife just to let the, uh, the filling breathe in there. And then I'm gonna throw it in my oven, 400 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes until they're finished. All right, there they are. And that's exactly how long it took our cake to bake. Okay, after that, I feel like we need a simple recipe because I definitely don't feel like diving into the Linzer cookie quite yet. So if you have a really good homemade peanut butter cookie recipe, I know there are simple ones out there, like literally peanut butter, or no, yeah, peanut butter and an egg and like half a cup of sugar or something like that. But I'm gonna make it even more easy because I bought a peanut butter mix. They were buy one, get one free and I was like, I'm gonna take the easy way out on this, you know? I have a little something more complex and a little something easy. Both of them are impressive in my eyes. So I'm gonna throw this together. I can't remember the last time I had a peanut butter cookie, but you know when the last time I had a scoop of peanut butter with some chocolate chips on it? I'm talking like spoon of peanut butter, chocolate chips on top, and that's it, that straight in, like a caveman. I, that's how I hold my spoon. That's how you do it, you know? Satisfy the cravings. But instead, this time around, we're gonna top them with a heart-shaped Dove chocolate. Milk, chocolate, and peanut butter. Nothing goes better, okay? What do I need for this? Are you gonna tell me? No butter? I love it. You just need an egg, oil, and water. Oh, I think I have a Valentine's Day mixing bowl. Or I thought I did. No, I don't. But you know what? I do have leftover cupcakes from Avelina's birthday party. Those are probably still good, really. I don't have enough space in my garbage can and I don't want the kids to see those and want to eat them so I'm gonna pretend I didn't see that all right into a bowl we have the peanut butter mix nothing gets easier than this and I'm literally following the directions on the back of the bag one egg three tablespoons of oil two tablespoons of water this sink is so convenient and that's it mix it up I feel like I just bought these pans, but they are already looking real grody. A layer of parchment paper. I'm gonna grease it. Take my cookie scoop and just put as many on here as possible. And I don't think peanut butter cookies really flatten, so I'm just going to flatten them just slightly. Okay, so earlier I put the uh, recipe for the peanut butter cookies that I saw on Pinterest with the heart in them. The only difference is I think it had one less tablespoon of water. So maybe that made all the difference. And it did use a package of peanut butter cookie dough or whatever from the store. I feel like this is going to be a great alternative to Reese. That's right. Yeah. Okay. My camera cut out. This is going to be a great alternative to Reese's peanut butter cup. Peanut butter cup? Yeah, the heart shapes. Oh my gosh, it was so dang good. So good. But I don't know why mine turned out so large and in charge. The taste was there though. Well, they spread out a lot more than I thought they would. Weird, but have you guys seen that um, cookie hack? Like these look pretty uniform, but if you grab a cup, I don't know, what shape is it? Is it this one? Is it bigger than Dorothy? Yeah, okay, bigger than Dorothy. This might actually be too, oh my gosh, it's the perfect size. So you just, oh no, it's, I cut some off. Ah, well. Anyway, you do that and apparently it's supposed to come out and be absolutely perfect. So do I need to do that with all the cookies? No, but it's Galentine's Day, so yes. I mean, does it really make a difference? If you've got like pretty wonky cookies, but these aren't too bad. Okay, here's a good, here, there we go. Before, after, better. I bet if I keep going, it'll flatten out a little bit. All right, well, that's good enough. 
I don't care about it. So now here's the magic. You take the chocolate. I don't know if I'm supposed to let these cool or whatever. And now these peanut butter cookies are so big, we need like two chocolates. I'm gonna try to make more cookies and not flatten them out and see if that helps. But essentially, you just throw it on when it's semi-warm. It's like a snickerdoodle, but not, you know? All right, well, that's, it looks better on Pinterest. Do you see how cute these look? Do you understand my disappointment now? <laughs> like, mine look nothing like this. Why? You can see she uses a pouch of Betty Crocker peanut butter cookie mix. So did I. Where did I go wrong? See how hers calls for one tablespoon of water? I, I did two because my package called for two. Also, the two tablespoons of sugar. It's like, um, like this special sugar that you dust on top of the cookies to make it look all fancy. My grocery store didn't have it, but it's also the smallest Publix around, so I don't know. Okay, the place is a mess, but are you even cooking if you're not making a mess? This, I feel like, has cooled enough, and we're just gonna crumble it up. But to get it out of the pan easily, I'm just gonna cube it up and pop it. Oh, good, the bottom's still hot. Pop it in a bowl. Woo! Okay, okay, okay. Add some red food coloring maybe to vanilla cake mix. I almost did that. It tastes okay. It tastes like something I've had before. I can't put my finger on it. I don't know, maybe a pop tart or something. So now I just have a container of vanilla icing. Am I supposed to use this whole container? I don't know. We're making cake balls. And I remember the first time I made cake balls, it was way before Pinterest, way before cake balls was a thing. I wanna say it was like 13 years ago, I was pregnant, I made them for my baby shower and people were raving, okay? Rave reviews before Starbucks had cake balls for like $5 a cake pop. And they're super simple to make. They are a little bit time consuming because you have to dip them in chocolate. Oh man, dip them in chocolate. Oh yeah, okay, I bought them. I made an extensive grocery list. But essentially, you just throw in the cake, a little bit of icing, mix it up until it's a nice consistency. I'm sure the recipe has actual measurements, but I never follow recipes. Okay, everything is nice and incorporated. One more bite. That's pretty good. If you're doing red velvet, you can get cream cheese icing. That'd be a good combo. Okay, well, I think this is the best we're going to get. I put some more peanut butter cookies into the oven. And uh, let me show those to you but I, I honestly think this is better. <laughs> so I didn't squish these down, but they still spread out like peanut butter jelly style. And I'm thinking maybe it would have been better if I threw the dough into the fridge to like set. That might have worked or used half of the amount of dough so it wasn't as big of a circle because on Pinterest it just looks so much cuter. Anyway, I'm moving on to the cake balls. I'm waiting for my pan to come out of the oven. So I'm just gonna take the cake ball mixture and I did read the recipe. It calls for about half the container of the icing or until you can get a nice uh, consistency. And I feel like this is pretty fine. I don't know, maybe it's too mushy. Um, roll it into a ball and I'm going to do that with all of the batter. I don't know what to call it, the crumbs, the cake, and then throw it into the freezer for the balls to set. And then we're gonna dip them in chocolate. I don't know about you, but I'd rather have a rum ball than a cake ball. Yeah, me too. I'd rather have a rum ball than a cake ball, man, especially right now. But I will tell you, these, these cake balls are slowly disappearing from my house and not so slowly, actually. They are delicious. Tip, maybe make the balls a little smaller. I have a two tablespoon scoop right there, so maybe do a one tablespoon scoop. But the cho they're still really good. I didn't love them at first, and then I let them sit in the fridge overnight, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is addictive. And Alex is like, we need to get rid of some of these because he keeps, you know, every time he opens the fridge, they're right there. So he's like, okay, you eat it while you're looking for something else to eat, you know what I mean? It's that kind of treat. It's convenient. It's like you eat it, you know, eat it with your hands and all that stuff. So uh, yeah, they were good. Strawberry, I don't, I don't know. I don't think the strawberry flavor was very strong. So vanilla or chocolate go with red velvet cake is really just chocolate cake with red food coloring. I never understood the allure to that um, other than the cheese cream icing, which also isn't my favorite. So, you know, you don't, can't catch me there. 
So if that's your thing, go for it. If not, just, you know, do it with any flavor of your choice. I have also seen people do this with the sugar cookie um, and cream cheese. Like I've seen that on Instagram. You know what I mean? So look into that if that's your thing too. Easier, I bet. Well, I'd love to tell you that that was fast and easy. Really, the whole time I was doing it, I was like, oh my gosh, am I done yet? It, w it only took me five minutes. And you know the problem with that is I just kept hearing phantom cries. <laughs> I'm gonna throw these into the freezer, let them set, and then I'll move on to something else. Okay, it's been a while. <laughs> so, um, I don't remember where I was. <laughs> Cake balls. I'm debating, do I cover them in white chocolate? Which is what I bought, but I don't like. Whatever, I'm doing it. Melt some white chocolate. I'm just gonna grab a bowl. Melt it all. 30 second increments. Stirring in between, we had our contractor come over, our neighbors over. They ate my second batch of peanut butter cookies, but those came out way better because what I didn't show you before is that these are burned on the bottom. It's my fault because I put them on the bottom rack. I don't think anyone's gonna eat those. I might eat it. I like a good burned crisp. But I will say the ones, uh, the, when the chocolate melts, it's like, like that. This is looking deliciously melted. These have been in the freezer for long enough, so I'm just gonna do the double fork method. Pop, pop a ball in there, cover it with chocolate, and then give it the old tippity tap. Let all that excess chocolate drain off and then throw it back on the parchment sheet to cool down. And you know what? Maybe, maybe milk chocolate is a better choice for this. I like the strawberry milk chocolate or strawberry chocolate. I don't know. I already melted that, so I guess I'll just do it. I would recommend chocolate. Are we still making these cake balls? <laughs> I just do the voiceover at one point. I feel like I scrolled past a lot of stuff to get back to this. Maybe they were chilling in the fridge. At least I hope that's what was happening and I actually got some other stuff done. Um, chocolate, white chocolate, it doesn't, it didn't matter. The end result still tasted really good. Uh, so if you're not a fan of white chocolate, just pick whatever the heck that you want. But I'll also add that the white was delicious. And I'm using 10 ounces. So if you're wondering like, oh, how many balls will 10 ounces of chocolate cover? That's about it. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. That's, and then maybe a couple more if you like scraped it. I put it into a baggie so I can kind of drizzle it over top. And I didn't even use all of it. So uh, I don't know. Like if I worked harder, I could have covered all the balls. But the end, oh, I'll show you what I think worked better and was less time consuming. Um, when I was drizzling, when I put the chocolate into bags and decided to, you know, make it look all fancy, you could do food coloring with the white chocolate, make it red. Oh, throw some sprinkles on there. I had a ton of Valentine's Day uh, themed sprinkles that I could have thrown on there, but one, I totally forgot. And two, I don't like to eat sprinkles. Like I just think it ruins <laughs> whatever I'm eating. The kids love it though. So we're going to decorate with it on actually Valentine's Day, but I took the I, this is just chocolate in the Ziploc bag and I snipped the edge of it and that's all you need nothing fancy there but I took the chocolate and threw it over the cake balls that were uncovered that were undressed by chocolate these and just that and I feel like that is a wonderful alternative if you are looking to save time and also I bet it's going to taste just as good you know what I mean is the whole ball covered no but do you actually care also no at least I don't. <laughs> but there they are, all delicious in their delicious glory. I pointed and I was like, that's it. Like, that's the stuff right there. So now I'm giving you a good glance. Oh, aren't they so fancy and cute? I didn't cover all of them with the white chocolate because I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. So do whatever the heck you want. It's your kitchen. Make them the way you want. You're going to be the one eating them. A boon appetit. All right, I'm going to throw these beauties into the refrigerator. Oh, wonderful. Great choice I made to use the chocolate, the mil milk chocolate. Oh my gosh, I don't have room. All right, I, now I'm gonna throw together one of the easiest desserts you're ever going to make. And it's kind of like perfect for Valentine's Day because you know, Valentine's Day is kind of a passing through holiday. It's something you don't really think about, but it's nice to celebrate if you remember. 
So it is a simple three ingredient dessert. Easy to throw together. I'm just chopping up a few strawberries, but this would also be great with any other berries or without berries. The other ingredients include a pound cake. Thank you, Entenmann's. Wow, a pound cake. This is delicious. I don't have a Valentine's Day uh, platter, so we're just gonna cover the eyes. Should I do two layers or one? One, make it simple. And I'm just going to cut it in half. I'm gonna grab some chocolate spread. You can use Nutella. Obviously, it's a million times better with Nutella because nothing beats Nutella. But I'm using this chocolate almond butter. It's creamy and... I don't know what you mean by, but I'm using this chocolate almond butter. You don't know what I mean by. Don't you see how? So I'm using this mostly because I don't have any Nutella on hand, but also because this has three grams of sugar and Nutella has 22, no cap. Not that it matters because we're literally eating pound cake, but you know, save it where you can. And then grab the berries and just plop those on top. Pop the top on that. Ooh, <laughs> and you have a delightful dessert all made in under one minute. You can also top the top with some extra creamy chocolate and then throw some strawberries over top of the whole thing. Yeah, sure, why not? Cool. A, conf a true confection. <laughs> All right, this is making me laugh. I don't know, the first time I made this, I think maybe chocolate spread was on top of it. Who knows though, because when you cut it open, it's all gonna taste delicious. All right, here we go, let's crack into this. Here we are. Boom, a hamburger patty. Mmm. Don't be absurd. You know I want you. So it's the next morning. I'm going to make breakfast for everyone. This is one of Alex's favorite breakfasts, but I like never make it. I don't know why. It's super simple to throw together. I've even made it in the oven before. It's called eggy bread. That's what we call it. I don't know the official name or if there even is one, but you just take a piece of bread and ideally a cutter that is smaller than this. You just cut out the middle. You can use anything. I used to have a smaller heart. I don't know where it is. I decluttered it throughout the years. I think it got rusted. It was like a metal one. Anyway, just do this and then um, put it onto a skillet or I'm gonna use a griddle because I'm gonna do several. All right, we're dealing with field trip drama. <laughs> I just butter my pan like this. It's easier than buttering all of the bread. Don't you know? And then I throw the bread on here. I should have made a couple more. Maybe I'll add some because my griddle is so large and in charge. I need to grab more eggs. Make sure your griddle is hot and then throw the egg right in there. And you can cook it however you like. I like to kind of smush the egg because I don't like egg yolks. I'm, I don't know, I feel like I'm in the minority where everyone loves a gooey egg yolk and I'm like, ugh. Oh my gosh, hold on, it's going, it's, things are going too fast. I'm gonna break just a couple of them. And I also, to add a couple, whoops. All right, hold up, you can season them with salt and pepper if you wish. Just a little bit, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of butter, I totally forgot, to add the hearts on here, and this is the best part. And then when you eat them, you can just take the toasted hearts and like dab it in your yolky mess. And when it's time to flip, you could add some more butter grilled cheese style, or not. I always think more butter is more deliciousness. Mo butter, less problems. And then flip the hearts around too, and you've got a simple, easy breakfast for a crowd. And voila, a breakfast that says I love you. So I'm not usually one to go all out for Valentine's Day, and I definitely still did not go all out, but I feel like this is above and beyond what I typically do. I found this at Target, it was $10 and it's just one of those like punch things. We will have guests over on Valentine's Day. I think otherwise, you know, maybe I would have done like the cookies or something, but this will be fun. I guess you just punch it and you get a toy, but it's like just one of those chintzy crappy toys. You know what I mean? Like that will eventually end up in the garbage, like a tube of bubbles or a piece of crap heart with slime inside, which is foreboding in our house. I found this balloon, you blow it up, it says love, nice and simple. This is the Dash Waffle Maker that I was raving about. It has a heart in it, 
And I just think that's so darling. So hopefully I made those for you and put together a board. If not, eh, you can use your imagination. And then this was the catalyst. This is what I actually wanted to buy. There are eight cookies in here. And then it comes with some decorative stuff. I bought sprinkles, so I might like put out a board and do sprinkles with cupcakes or something. I don't know. So there's eight cookies, pre-made pink icing, pink, red, and white icing tubes, Sweetheart sugar mix and then sweetheart quins. What the heck is a quin? I don't know. <laughs> that's what's included, and I feel like that's good enough. The kids can have a cookie and like happy Valentine's Day, you know? All right, that is it. I hope you enjoyed all of the recipes that I shared with you today. If you want to, subscribe, put a little happy in your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.